Hello. <clears throat> Welcome to the stream. Tonight we are playing Cooking Companions, which is a um, kind of horror visual horror visual novel kind of thing. Um, I've heard it's very good, so uh, we're going to be playing that. Um, meanwhile, I'm sure you have immediately noticed the uh, um, lovely blue bar at the bottom of the screen there. Um, that is for the upcoming Desert Bus for Hope charity campaign um, that the Loading Ready Run comedy group is running uh, next week, um, starting on Saturday uh, afternoon, uh, which is always a lot of fun. I've been uh, following them uh, with and uh, that um, that event that they this event that they run Desert Bus for Hope um, since. Jeez, it was since college. Um, so it's been over, definitely over a decade at this point. Um, they've been doing this for quite a long time. Uh, basically, they raise money for the ch uh, charity Child's Play, uh, which, um, uh, which raises money uh, to uh, help children's hospitals uh, with... Um, uh, with video games and technologies, uh, to help children. Um, it's a, uh, it's a, a really good cause. Um, if you, uh, uh, put in that exclamation point bus, um, it'll, uh, give you a link to a, uh, much better description of, uh, of how that all works and, uh, and what they're doing than I can explain. Um, this, uh, down here is just, uh, taken from the top of their website. Um, it's, as you can see, it starts in, uh, just under six days now, and they've already raised, um, almost $1,800, um, which is great. Uh, last year they ended up raising over a million dollars over the course of the run, um, which usually ends up going for about, uh, a week or so. Um, it's, like, usually, like, seven or eight days. Um, uh, beyond that, it, uh, um... Like, they've got lives, too. They can't go forever. Um, but, uh, basically, the more people donate, the, the longer they go. Um, but, uh, the amount that it costs for each additional hour that they go, uh, increases. So, once you get to, once you get to about the eight-day mark, it becomes very unlikely that they're going to be able to raise enough money to increase the amount of time. And over the course of this event, uh, they play Desert Bus, which is the most boring game ever made. Um, where you drive from um, Las Vegas, Nevada to uh, Tucson, Arizona in real time down a straight desert um, in a bus that lists slightly to the left. Um, it is uh, a very dull game. So while they're doing that, they do all sorts of uh, um, busking and comedy sketches and various uh, activities and giveaways and auctions. and It's always a lot of fun. So. Um, definitely check that out if you enjoy a uh, um, nerdy online comedy group doing funny stuff to raise money for a good cause. Um, yeah, so uh, without further ado, uh, let's get started on Cooking Companions. Okay. There we go. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Please read this carefully. Okay, sure. That walk was brutal, but this cabin is amazing. Are these supposed to be voiced? It said that there were voices. I don't know if it's fully voiced or if, uh, uh, if it's only, like, voice blurbs. Full kitchen, running water, it really has everything. Finally, a place I can read a good book in peace. I can't wait to... Ta. Ah. Ah, choo. I'm sorry, everyone. It must be the dust. Get those allergies under control, Mariah. Don't worry, guys. I'm sure with a little elbow grease, we can make this cabin shine. So are you volunteering to clean, Gregor? No. I don't have any supplies here. Guess we'll have to go out to get what we need. There's a fireplace for making stew, so let's gather up some firewood, okay? 
Leave that to me, little guy. I'll tidy up around the cabin. Need to save Mariah from dying due to this dust. Ha ha ha. Hey. Allergies are nothing to joke about, Karen. She's not dead yet, Pipsqueak. Calm down. Thanks, Anatoly. I think I'll go foraging outside. With over 450 mosses, 900 fungi, and 70 slime molds, there's bound to be treasure up there, up here. Roughing it is fun. Anatoly knows so much about edible foods. We're in good hands. I think the slime molds will be most delicious. Most certainly not. What about the fungi? Do you even know which ones are poisonous, Anatoly? I, uh, I could figure that out. You can be the canary in the coal mine, Anatoly. I'm not ending up a corpse here. Eek! Keep both eyes open, little guy. Plenty of wolves and brown bears around. They won't be a problem. I read up on ten different techniques to incapacitate them. Number one is... Anatoly! Uh, is there supposed to be dialogue here? What? What just happened? Um, is there a command for... We can turn the up a little. Um, I don't know if there's a command for going back to review previous text, because I feel like we just missed some stuff. Ah, yeah, here we go. They won't be a problem. I read up on ten different techniques to incapacitate them. Number one is... Anatoly. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Maria. Got carried away again. Haha. <laughs> I'll help Anatoly look for food. I'm definitely better off, better at warding off wild animals. If we come up empty-handed, we can always eat some of the food we brought. You mean the emergency rations? What? Okay, what's going on here? Bad idea, chump. Why are the... I don't know why the dialogue isn't coming up. Hey, Anatoly and Mariah are getting the food. Gregor is gathering the firewood that makes you our designated chef. Everyone's looking at you expectantly. You nod. Why is it... I don't understand what's going on here. I'm going to restart the game real quick. new. Oh, let's start normally, yes. Okay, this looks like it's working properly. Or at least different, because it, before it wasn't uh, scrolling the text. It was just popping it up. So I think there must have been a weird bug when uh, we loaded it up last time. Alright, here we go. Very excited to try your cooking. Alright everyone, let's go to work while there's still sunlight. Later. 
Maria, Anatoly, Gregor, the three eggs of the cabin, leaving you and Karen alone. I think Anatoly put the supplies in the kitchen. Thanks for helping out with the cooking. Okay, to save the game, right-click or hit escape on your keyboard to pull up the menu. This menu will, will also allow you to adjust volume levels or exit to the title screen. Please note, going back to the main menu or exiting the game without saving will remove progress you've made. Make sure to save. Okay, so let's save here. And let's adjust the volume a little. Yeah, that's a bit better. Oh great, I think we broke it again. So does opening the menu break it? Or the, the options menu? What if we go back to title screen? Can we... Okay, this is kind of janky. It's not using a ton of memory. So I'm not sure what exactly is going on. Huh. Alright, guess we'll try uh, restarting it again. And we'll just have to not save until... Um, until we're done for the evening. Yeah, here we go. Do you have any experience making meals? Ah, uh, Sure, we'll say of course. Is that so? Hmm. Looking at you, I think you'd be good at serving up food poisoning. Well, that's rude. Right? It looks like Karen will remember that. Anyways, going to check out the living room. Let's talk later. Karen heads to the living room and starts dusting a bit. You decide to look around the kitchen to find the ingredients for the meal tonight. Okay, you never know what you'll find around the cabin. Clues and secrets may be revealed by searching an area more than once. Why not give it a try? What area do you want to search first? Um, well, we're looking for food, so let's check the cupboards. The first few cupboards are empty. Anatoly must have put the supplies somewhere else. If we check them again. Check the cupboards again. Just some mouse turds and cobwebs. We check the cupboards under cupboard underneath the sink. You found a dead mouse! This would be a great gift to give to Karen. You added the dead mouse to your inventory. I feel like that is a bad idea, but, uh, you put the dead mouse back in the cupboard. Karen's not ready for the dead mouse yet? Wait, what? You notice the letter L engraved on the side of the cupboard. What a fitting gravestone for the mouse. What? Oh, God damn it! What is going on with this friggin' game? I don't understand what's happening here. Is it something to do with the size of the window? Did resizing it? Because I, re I did resize it. I'm wondering if maybe that... Messed it up. No. No, I'm gonna try closing it out again. And we'll see if restarting it with the window at the proper size fixes this.
Because if I can't get this working properly, then I'm not going to be able to play this. Oops, what did I choose? Oh, I guess I chose probably not. I appreciate your honesty. Let me know if you need help with anything. I'm pretty good with a knife. Karen looks pleased with your answer. Oh, well, I guess we, at least we got the right answer, even though we clicked it by accident. Perhaps this is the beginning of a wonderful rela relationship. Karen will remember that. Okay. Oh, cool. So when you choose the right answer, it increases your relationship. Cool. Anyways, going to check out the living room. Let's talk later. Karen heads to the living room and starts dusting it back here. Let's, uh... Decide to look around the kitchen to find the ingredients for the meal tonight. Yes, yeah, searching the things, the cupboards. Check the cupboards again, just some mouse turds. You found dead mouse. This would be a great gift for Karen. Put the dead mouse back. She's not ready yet. Notice the letter L. What a fitting gravestone. Okay. I think this is working properly now. That's really weird. I've never seen a glitch quite like that. Alright, let's keep going and hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, it won't keep screwing up. There's nothing but cobwebs back here. Thankfully, no spiders. Oh god fucking damn it! Yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on here. I don't know why it is doing this. Yeah, this is unplayable like this. <sighs> well, let me quickly check Steam, see if there's any uh, reports of something like this and how to fix it. Here we go. Bug makes game unplayable. Basically, after a few minutes of playing, the text stops loading and the whole game stutters. If you try to go to the menu, it becomes unresponsible to Yeah. Um... from July. Okay. 
There might just be something here. Shift G. Okay, here we go. Power save disabled. Turn. Okay, now we're gonna close out. Gonna run it again here. Because according to the thing, this should fix the problem. Um, or at least it did for the individuals who were running into this issue. Okay, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. Because, here, if we do shift G, good, so it is set to disable. Good. It's pleased. Yes, relationship up. Okay. Do the cupboards first, first two cupboards are empty. We found mouse turds. We found the dead mouse. We put the dead mouse back. Fitting gravestone. Okay, that's it. So behind the wood pile, there's nothing but cobwebs back here. Thankfully, no spiders. You look at the wood logs closer. This is just a pile of Norway spruce. The Norway spruce won't burn as hot as logs from an oak tree. These would be useless during a snowfall. Yeah, because spruce is softwood, and softwood does not burn as well as hardwood. You reconsider your views on Norway spruce. It's less dense and won't fill the cabin with a heavy smell. Okay. The supplies aren't anywhere near here. Alright. The drawers. You check the drawers on the left. Just some dirty knives. You check the drawer above the mouse hole. Some kind of mold is growing in this one. Maybe Karen will find it appetizing. You check the drawer above the wood pile. Something is making it difficult to open. You pull it open with all your might. Wee, it's time! Okay. Chompette, sound off. Onion. Never fear, Onion is here. <laughs> like my cousin Cornbread says, I'll rise to the occasion. Yeah. Always marry raspberry. Oh, Nothing from cabbage. Potato? Cabbage stuffed me into this drawer. I'm pretty sure this counts as kidnapping. Hey, hi, hi. We're the chompettes. Why talk with those boring yes, humans? All they have to give you is grandma. Come chat with us instead. We'll share valuable recipes you can cook. Boy, boy, boy. We'll share with you our secret chompette recipes. Collect them all to become a five-star chef. Okay, you can find unlocked recipes in the main menu under extra, but be sure to save the game. To celebrate, here's your first recipe card. Cabbage. Roasted eggplant with sesame and pomegranate. Meat free. You unlock your first recipe. If you ever want to talk, just come to the drawer. John Pex. Let's move out. Cabbage rudely slams the drawer closed. You wonder if what you just saw was real. You're slightly worried about what this means for your mental state. But only slightly. Yeah, apparently this game has some, like, actual recipes um, for, uh, like, vegan meals that they give you uh, that you can access from the main menu. I think it's, it's a neat feature. It's not something that I'll personally be uh, um, taking advantage of. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice little thing. <clears throat> hey, did you find the supplies? You shake your head. Anna totally lied. He actually put them in the bedroom. Idiot. Here you go. 
You got the emergency supplies. Karen leaves you alone. You start a fire with some of the wood and get to work on cooking dinner. Tonight's entree, vegetable stew. In a large saucepan over medium heat, you heat some water with potatoes, carrots, and celery in it. Fifteen minutes later, you drain the pan and set the vegetables aside. Placing some butter in the saucepan, you melt it over medium heat. Throwing some chopped onions in, you cook it about ten minutes. Uh, I really hope they're not going to go through every friggin' recipe you make. The onions are tender and translucent. Perfect. You next mix in some flour, salt, pepper, and heavy cream into the saucepan, adding the vegetables to the mixture. Hours pass. We're back. More firewood than you'll ever need. We found some wild sorrel. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a bigger bounty. Anatoly's burying the lead. We saw a red deer. Mariah spotted it. Yeah, that's great. Anyways, killed 17 spiders today while you were out looking at deer. Yeah! That should come as no surprise. There's over 160 species of spiders here. Oh, 160? Don't worry, Mariah. I'm sure they were all in the bathroom or something. Heh, no. Almost all of them were near the couch. Yeah! I was going to sleep on the couch! That's where 16 of them were. <laughs> I'm not sleeping on that couch then. Hmm. And there's only two beds in the bedroom. Don't sweat it, Mariah. I can sleep anywhere, so I'll sleep in the rocking chair. I'll sleep with one eye open, just in case any of them swarm the couch. Thanks, Gregor. Karen and Anatoly, you two take the bedroom. Thanks, big guy. Joke's on you, Gregor. I always planned on taking one of the beds. Hey, Anatoly, I snore louder than a yum lumber yard. Eck. Sweet dreams, chump. You turn back to your bubbling vegetable stew and try a bite. Ooh, that actually looks really good. <laughs> this tastes pretty good. You cooked vegetable stew. Though, if this is vegetable stew, what are those brown chunks? Like, there's these little br there's these brown chunks that look a lot like meat. You set the table and ask everyone to dig in. Oh wow, this smells delicious. Thank you. You must be a world-class chef. Karen takes a bite. It's bland as hell. Karen, tastes like every other vegetable stew I've ever had. So generic. Could probably use some meat next time. Yeah. Gross. For a side dish, we could bake some bread and utilize the Fregaria Vesca, also known as strawberries, for some jam. Nobody cares, Pipsqueak. Everyone laughs at Karen's polite rimming. Nothing makes you happier than cooking a great meal for friends. This could very well be the best day you've ever had. You go to bed stuffed. Day one now. Alright, seems like uh, that change uh, did fix the problem, at least so far. Hmm, excuse me. Sorry. The daylight savings shift has my head all wonky. Hey, you up? How would you sleep? I was so warm last night I didn't even need a blanket. <laughs> what time is it? About one hour until dawn. Good lord. It's way too early. Will you two pipe down? I'm trying to sleep over here. 
Yawn. Gregor, the birds outside aren't making much noise yet. We didn't bring many supplies, remember? Better to get a head start on gathering food. I honestly can't see the trees outside right now. Gregor, did you see any spiders last night? There was a small one in the bathroom. Heck! <coughs> Actually, I did see a centipede by the sink. Mariah turns a little pale. Karen's messing with you, Mariah. Let's find more than Wild Sorrel today. Yeah. If you're lucky, little guy, maybe I'll teach you how to catch some wild brown trout. What's with you and meat, big guy? Anatoly's herbalism book stated that there's many more species of plants to eat out here. Let's leave the fish alone. How about you shut the hell up, Mariah? You know I'm not, uh, into meat. Well, that's just too damn bad. That's a shame. I'd wake up early to go fishing. Cheer up, Karen. We'll get to observe the trout at the very least. Maybe we'll see more red deer today. That sounds like a waste of time, Gregor. Haha. -ha. Maybe we'll find some blackthorn berries. I love blackthorn berries. Perf. Haha. -ha. We'll be back later. Can you watch our stuff today? You nod. Thank you. Thanks. Hermph. Don't steal anything, okay? No promises. You nod. Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, and Karen leave the cabin with a hop in their step. You're alone, but thankfully you have a drawer of trompettes to keep you company. Okay. Each day, you'll be asked to explore a different part of the cabin. You only get one choice, then the day will end. Choose wisely. What do you want to check out today? Let's save... Hmm... Jeez, I'm yawning up a storm today. Let's go into the basement. This door goes into the basement. There's no reason to go into the basement right now. You wait for the others to return. What? That's nonsense. We're back. Tee hee. Knock it off, Maria. It's pretty rare to be scared of one. It's not. Ha <laughs> Who knew the big guy would be so scared of... S Shut up. You don't understand. I don't think anyone understands, Gregor. It was just a marmot, Gregor, not a monster. Mariah laughs so hard that your ears ring. Ha 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 <laughs> Tears are rolling down Mariah's cheeks. She's laughing so hard that she's about to hyperventilate. Stop Mariah from hyperventilating. Absolutely not. One less mouth to feed, right? You don't get it. It's pretty personal. And please explain, big guy. I, uh... Gregor looks incredibly uncomfortable. Hehehe, <laughs> let's leave him alone. We found some raspberries and elderberries near the cabin. Quite the selection of berries. <clears throat> we also found more wild sorrel. Is this going to be enough for a good meal? Everyone is looking at you for an answer. You decide to do an inventory of all available ingredients. It takes you a while, but you decide on your specialty, cabbage rolls. You first bring a large pot of water to a boil. You let the cabbage leaves boil for two minutes, draining the pot into the sink. In a medium mixing bowl, you combine some cooked rice, onion, an egg, salt and pepper, along with some tomato sauce. You use your hands to mix thoroughly and decide to wash your hands after it won't come off. 
dividing the rice mixture evenly between the cabbage leaves. You then roll them up and tie a string around them so they stay in one piece. You place the cabbage rolls in a large skillet over medium heat, pouring the rest of the tomato mixture over the top. Covering it, you bring it to a boil. You reduce the heat to low and let the cabbage rolls simmer for about 40 minutes, being sure to base it with liquid. And ta-da, you cook cabbage rolls. Mariah looks optimistic. Karen looks skeptical. Anatoly looks curious. Gregor looks thrilled. You watch intently as everyone takes their first bite. Mmm. That's pretty darn good. Wow, I can eat the whole batch myself. I think the vegetable stew tasted better, but I'm loving how tender the cabbage is. The sauce is pretty red. Did you use fresh tomatoes for it? It really adds to it. Spoon some of the liquid on top of it, you'll thank me later. Ooh, incredible! It's definitely growing on me. Thanks again for cooking, this really was something special. Everyone leaves the dishes- everyone leaves the dishes behind for you to do. Because they're assholes. Okay. Not happening. You settle in and go to bed. Everyone goes to bed full. Tomorrow will be another great day. Okay. I'm not sure what it is that's not happening, but I guess we'll see. Good morning, everyone! Gay! Again, Gregor? Can't you let us sleep in? Not today! Oops. Why? Storm clouds are gathering outside. We need to find some food before it begins to downpour. Gregor, you're overreacting. We have enough food to last us a while. Enough food? I thought we used most of the supplies for last night's dinner. He's right. The meal you made was delicious, but it used a lot of what we had. Gregor's also collect correct. Precipitation is unusually high in this area, with many areas being high risk for flooding. It'd be foolish to not go out and look for food today. You really think it'll flood? Thankfully, the cabin's on high ground, but that doesn't mean we're safe from floodwaters. It's always a possibility, so it can't hurt to be prepared. You're losing it, Gregor. Karen, there's nothing to worry about. I think Gregor's right, Karen. Huh? It won't hurt to prepare for the worst. Hmm. I think she's right, Karen. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Anatoly. Let's go out and prepare for the storm. Foraging should be a key priority today. There are plenty of edible foods and it has to be better, um, and it has better odds than trying to hunt. Give me a few minutes and I'll plot out our route on some paper. Let me help, little guy. Anatoly and Gregor head to the bedroom to consult the map. Mariah and Karen are still hanging around. Unfortunately, in life, you can't make everyone happy. When given a choice to speak to a character, choose wisely. You can only select one of them. Try and max out your bond with certain characters for unique dialogue and scenarios. Which one would you like to talk to? I got plenty of sleep this weekend. I don't know why I'm so tired. Uh, let's see. Mariah or Karen? Mariah is cuter. But... She's also v vegan. So 
So let's work on uh, getting Karen up since we've already got one heart with her. Hey, this paper nailed to the wall looks pretty ancient. What were the old days like? Hmm. Not sure what you mean. Extremely brutal. Not as bad as times like these. Save. We're gonna save scum. Hmm. I'm not sure what the right answer is. I'm not sure what you mean. Never mind. You must enjoy these antiquities, huh? You bore Karen with some brief, uh, yet dull descriptions of items lying around. Cool, I'll tell, uh, the others later. Karen looks disturbed by your comments. You hear a loud laugh from the other room. Okay, yeah, let's, uh... Um, I guess extremely brutal? Oh, really? You'll have to share the details with me later. Okay. Karen will not be able to stomach your stories. But you still agree you'll tell her the details later. Karen will definitely remember that. Hey, that was the right choice. You hear a shout from the other room. Gregor and Anatoly came back come back from their meeting. Gregor is blushing slightly. Hey. Can you cook something while we're out? You nod. Thank you. Alright everyone, we have our route for now. Let's beat those rain clouds. The group leaves, determined as ever. You have the cabin all to yourself. What's that noise? Sounds like it's coming from the kitchen. Huh? Radio? What's going on with that radio? You didn't even notice it on the ground when you walked in. Did somebody leave this radio here? It looks newer than anything you've seen before. It seems to be broken. Better hold on to this. You got strange radio. Before you cook dinner, what should you check out? Hmm. I don't think it's gonna let me go into the basement. So... Hmm. Ah, oh, back edge. Okay, uh, let's look around the bathroom. Oh, this is a real ghetto bathroom. You remember an old t tale about a child who said a killer's name three times into a mirror? But you can't remember how it ended. You're too frightened to even try it. You leave the bathroom a little more scared than when you entered. That's just nonsense. Mariah's back early today. Hey. The others are still looking for food outside. Anatoly found some more berries. But nothing that will feed all of us. Please don't tell the others, but I'm a little worried about our supplies. I crunched the numbers and we don't ha have enough food, even with rationing, to last if there's a big storm and we get stuck here. Mariah seems disappointed in your inventory management. Can you try cooking with a little less this evening? You nod. 
Thank you. You've done such a great job with meals so far. You're very sweet. Is Mariah blushing a little bit? Tee hee hee. Mariah will remember that. Okay. I don't think we actually did anything, but okay. Maybe you can teach me to cook sometime. You nod. Looking forward to it. Hey, you can hold cooking classes here someday. Rudely interrupting a tender moment, the others burst into the cabin. Don't be so down, everyone. We got tons of good berries. Tish. Jam is so bland without any sugar. Do you have any sugar? You shake your head sadly. Yikes. Turn that frown upside down, Karen. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? I'm not smiling for you, Gregor. Eek. Uh... You missed out. The sunset was really tremendous on our way back. Hues of orange, red, even a little purple poking out. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors take warning. So we can expect a sailor's delight tomorrow? That's awesome. You're such an optimist, big guy. We must have walked a few miles today. Gorgeous sights. You can even see snow on the tips of the mountains. That rumble sounded like a dying calf. You look from person to person, trying to determine who it was. It was definitely Maria. Mariah, I'd recognize that sound from anywhere. Gah, guilty. Mariah looks embarrassed, with a group laughs at her honestly. Except for you. You search your mind for something to say, but all you can think of is an old island riddle. Ahem. Those who have it do not want it. Those who have it least succeed. Those who have it for too long perish. When you feed it, it gets smaller. What am I? Hmm. Dust? Try again, big guy. Everyone's pondering the answer. Mariah's face lights up. I got it. Is it hunger? Correct. Yeah, I was gonna guess that. So, uh, what's on the menu tonight, Chef? Bread and jam. You crush the berries in your small mortar and pestle and spread it on some crusty bread. You cooked raspberry jam and bread. The bread's a little tough. Gregor, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. But this homemade jam is to die for, haha. Sorry. No, you're right, Gregor. This bread stinks. Mariah. Everybody laughs. You're not sure this can be called a meal. But it got the job done. Everyone thanks you for dinner and heads off to sleep. go to bed wishing you had more. You have a strange dream. Something is riding on your back. And it's becoming a nuisance. You try to see it in the mirror, but you can't get a good look at it. You try almost everything. But it won't get off. The pain between your shoulder blades is getting worse by the minute. You wander away from the cabin, stumbling by a river to soak your pain in cool water. You didn't want things to come to this, but you've exhausted all other options. You swim out to the middle. Rocks on the bottom cut your feet. You slip and fall to your knees. You lean back, trying to submerge the thing uh, under the waters. But it won't drown. It won't drown. It won't drown. You splash frantically, plunging your head beneath the water. The current takes you downstream. 
Try swimming to the shore. But it's no use. Water fills your mouth and nostrils. After a minute, you stop struggling against the current. As you gaze up at the sky, you feel like it leaving your back, drifting into the sky as you sink to the bottom. As you take your last gasp, you see what was on the other side. Other, you see what was on your back, staring into the the eyes. But you don't even have the air in your lungs to scream. You wake in a cold sweat. Oh. I didn't see what that was. Okay, clearly a body of some kind, but I couldn't tell if it was one of the people. Okay, I just need to quickly stand up and walk around for a second because I am falling asleep here. Uh, just bear with me a minute.
All right. Added a bit of lime juice to my water. That should uh, keep me up. All right, wake up. Sorry, you were making strange noises in your sleep. <laughs> Mariah just looks like how I feel every morning. What's going on, Gregor? Did the lightning wake you up? It woke me up. I tried to fall back asleep, but it's so loud. Ugh. Let's just get back to sleep and talk about this in the morning. Everyone nods in agreement and gets back to bed. <laughs> Except for you. Oh, great. Can't fall back asleep. What? It's gonna sh fucking... Is it? No, the power save is still disabled. <laughs> I don't understand why it's doing this. Okay, let's see if they have it. Let's see if there are any other suggestions. This is really, uh, irritating me. Yeah, that was the only thing that, uh... Select a different render. Okay, um... It's forced GL2 render. Return. So what were the, uh, things? Every nods in green gets back to bed. Except for you, you can't fall back asleep. You still have goosebumps from the nightmare. Okay, let's close out. You still have goosebumps from the nightmare. Karen's snoring is louder than a sawmill. You find it very loud and very distracting. You don't sleep a wink. Everyone is now up and awake in the cabin. You hear the front door open and quickly slam shut. Anatoly sounds petrified. I looked out the door and were completely surrounded by floodwaters. Looks like sailors take warning was more appropriate for today. Maybe it'll clear up tomorrow. You can't steal big guy's optimism, Karen. Why the hell not? That's all he has going for him. Heck. He's also good at chopping wood, though. Ha ha ha. Knock it off, you two. Mariah, do you think it'll clear up tomorrow? I give it a 27% chance of clearing up tomorrow. Based on what? I was bored stiff, so I read a, a book on local precipitation levels for the last 20 years in the living room. Wow, and she must really have been bored. Sounds like you're stealing Anatoly's thunder. Anatoly, you're a book nerd, right? Why didn't you read it? Eck. Couldn't make it past the cover. Is that right? Yes. 
That bookshelf has some great books on artisan crafting and natural sciences. Why let them sit there gathering dust? How did you arrive at a 27% chance of it clearing up tomorrow? It's easy. Take the time of year, multiply it by a factor of... Mariah begins to explain meteorology to you. She isn't dumbing any of this down. It's similar to... I don't know how to pronounce all of that. Like... I... Thing... Mu... X mu I... Mu mu M... Equals zero, where... So the first thing you need to understand... Minutes of explanation feels like hours. You look over at Anatoly. He's listening intently to Maria. So intently, he hasn't blinked yet. You can see his eyes drying up. A tear rolls down one of his cheeks. This is brutal to watch. Mariah finally wraps up her lecture. She ends with a bow. Nobody claps. Tough crowd. Mariah, that was awe-inspiring. You lost me a few minutes in, but it's okay. Didn't understand a word of it, haha. <laughs> yeah. Anatoly turns to you. Anyway, there's no telling how long this will last. We can't leave the ca cabin until these floodwaters stop. I know our food situation is a little tight, but I know you'll make the right decisions. I believe in you. Me too. Mariah seems haunted. <laughs> <clears throat> Looks like we have enough leftover berries for more bread and raspberry jam. I'll pass on the jam. Just give me more crusty bread. Everyone laughs. Except for you. With everyone stranded in the cabin, you need to keep everyone fed and happy. <clears throat> you sneak out to the kitchen while everyone's still talking. You get out some crusty bread and get to work making some more jam. With the kitchen to yourself, you decide to check in on the chompettes. Don't worry, as leader of the Chompettes, I'll make sure none of the humans know about us. That big guy would try eating me like an apple, so definitely don't tell them about us. Ha ha ha. Are your plans going awry? Ha ha ha. Got another cornbread classic for you. Did you hear about the bread maker's bakery burning down? No? Her business is now toast. Ha ha ha. That one's been done to death. Do you know how raspberry and milk were introduced? You tell her no. Raspberry! Raspberry, milk, shake. You let out an audible groan. Ha ha ha. Didn't cornbread teach you that one? Nope, wasted an entire day thinking about that terrible pun. Ha ha ha. It was well worth the time and effort, raspberry. Maybe you'll win the annual Trumpet Comedy Competition this year. Scary. Of course. Onion. Not while I'm here. Yeah. I won't choke on stage this year. Isn't that every year, Brad? <laughs> ha ha ha. We still talk about that closing line, Brad. You're going to do great this year. Anyways, don't even think of eating us if you're hungry. Trumpets stick together through thick and thin. Rain or shine. Feast and famine. Potato, I swear to God, repeat the line or we're locking you up again. Life or death. That's right. Chompettes, move out. The Chompettes somehow managed to close the drawer on themselves. You bring the crusty bread and jam into the living room. Karen interrupts as you bring in the food. Took you long enough. 
Karen looks at the two slices of bread left in the masonry, mason jar of raspberry jam. There's mold on these last two slices of bread. Karen is right. What the hell is the matter with you? You grip the knife tightly in your hand. You think this is enough for five of us? Wait, we can't throw this bread away. It's all we have left. Gregor's right. Anatoly, will mold spores give us food poisoning? I'm, uh, no scientist. Sorry. Hmm. Let's pick off as much mold as we can. We can't leave with the floodwaters, so this will have to last us another day. Everyone grimly nods, ripping apart their piece like a pack of wolves. Gregor seems to unhinge his jaw and eat it in one bite. He looks like a duck eating bread. Thanks again. Bread and jam isn't much of a meal, but it's more than we had when we left Ukraine. Um, now this, uh, this game is from over a year ago, so it doesn't have to do with the current situation, but, uh, um, I have a feeling they were in dire straits regardless. Plenty of rainwater outside, so at least we won't die of dehydration. But until the storm is over, nobody should leave the cabin. We should clear up if we just give it a chance. Anatoly, where are you getting that information from? One of the books on the bookshelf about the climate here. Hmm, you're illiterate, so that's definitely a lie. Eck! I've seen him reading. Little guy's been studying. I'm serious. He pretends to read those books because he wants us to think that he's smart. But I can tell he's just staring at the page, faking it. What do you think? Hmm, let's save. Karen is kind of a bitch. We'll say he can read. You must be going blind then. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know why Karen would make something up like that about me. You aren't fooling anyone, Anatoly. Karen is stormed off. Thanks for backing me up. Alright, we got a point with uh, Anatoly. Good to have someone so positive around. Anatoly looks relieved. You think he'll remember that? I guess let's call it a day. Yeah, sure. Everyone shuffles off to their sleeping areas. Ten minutes later. Hey. Karen likes to find somebody's weakness and use it against them when she's frustrated. Just wanted to thank you for backing me up earlier. You're very sweet to do that. Anatoly looks at you with a look of admiration. Heh. See you tomorrow. Okay, so can he read or not? Anatoly looks like he's blushing as he walks away. You're definitely sure Anatoly will remember that. Wait, why did it only go to one heart? It was already at one heart from like three minutes ago. Get ready for bed and put a blanket on. You go to bed very hungry. You don't dream the entire night, but you sleep through everyone waking up. And that's how fast a deer could run if startled. Whoa. Incredible. Impressive. Yawn. I wish we had a deer here. With the food getting lower, let's just skip today's meal. Mm. Shh. No. 
It's only for one day. Various cultures and religions have practiced fasting throughout history. That doesn't make us feel any better, Anatoly. What options do we have? Our food wasn't rationed properly. Anatoly leaves, mumbling to himself. Wow, way to throw us under the fucking bus. After we stood up for him. So passive-aggressive of him. Everyone goes to a separate area. Karen in the bedroom. Gregor in the living room. Mariah in the kitchen. And Anatoly in the bathroom. Who do you want to speak to? Hmm... Yeah, Anatoly kind of just threw me under the bus there. So I don't, I'm, I'm mad at them. I don't want to talk to them. Let's talk to Karen, because I'm worried that she's the most likely to, uh, to stab me. Looks like she's just slicing away at a block of wood. That's not uh, concerning at all. Hey. Can I let you in on a secret? I've actually enjoyed your cooking so far. The others expect me to be rude and mean. So I have to keep that reputation up, right? Can't have anyone thinking I'm soft. You're not sure where this is coming from. Promise me you'll give me some cooking lessons soon. Okay? She's not ready yet, but you nod politely. Thank you. You're definitely sure Karen will remember that. Cool. You leave Karen by yourself. To slice up her wood. Everyone looks pretty down this evening. Wish the rain would just stop. You're all doing great. We must be almost at the end of this nightmare. Mm. I'm so hungry. Me too. You are too. You wish everyone a good night and get ready to bed. Ready, get ready for bed. Go to bed with a growling stomach. You have a strange dream. A boy is yelling at you in the kitchen. You keep telling him to lie down on the tray, but he keeps shaking his head, calling you names. So you do it. You lie down on the tray and make your body as flat as a board. You show him how it's done. His anger turns to courage. And he pushes you into the oven. As the stench of burning hair fills your lungs, you see him sneering back at you. You wake in a cold sweat. Everyone seems to be sleeping in later than normal. Their stomachs must have kept them awake all night. The rain is still pouring outside. You can barely make out the trees from the windows. You hear a stirring of blankets, arms, and legs. Mariah looks petrified. I... couldn't sleep. Anatoly has bags under his eyes. This storm is too loud. Karen looks out of it. Oh yeah, she does not look great. The cabin was creaking so much last night. It sounded alive. Gregor looks a little gaunt. I got a good look out the window. And? Couldn't see anything due to the rain. Great observation, Gregor. I was so hungry last night. I kept pacing around my bed. Karen turns to you. 
When is this going to end? Don't ask me. I'm not a fucking weather wizard. I check outside the door again. Floodwaters keep rising. Unfortunately, we're going to need to stay put unless one of us wants to drown in rainwater. As soon as the weather lets up, we'll be able to scavenge for supplies. How close is the nearest town? I don't know. Didn't you have a map on you? I think I dropped it while we were running after Kreger. I'm sure it'll show up eventually. Ha 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 ha. Marion and, and Antony go white as a sheet. How are we going to find our way back now? We'll... have to ride out of the storm. Mariah looks at you. We're down to our last slice of bread. Uh, I don't know how much longer we can put off eating. The group stares at you. It will clear up in no time. Now yeah, maybe you're right. The group is look looks worried. They all gravitate to an area. You can tell Gregor's putting on a fake optimism and Mariah's having trouble. Which one do you want to speak with today? Hmm... Hmm, let's talk to Gregor. Oh, hey. I know you already searched the kitchen, but I had to double check. Fool's errand. I wish everyone was in better spirits. It can't rain forever. Right? Rainfall in this area can last days to a week. You tell Gregor to stay strong. You know what? Thank you. The group is really thankful for your kindness. Gregor blushes a little bit. I always wanted to be the one that kept everything in good spirits. But it's obvious you do that much better. Gregor's looking at you fondly. You're sure Gregor will remember that? Cool. The rain is pounding hard against the wood cabin. But at least none of it is getting inside. You tell Gregor to keep his spirits up and join the others. Uh, you call everyone together. They all look grim. You could cut the tension in the room with a knife. Everyone is staring at you. They're expecting that last piece of bread for dinner. You bring it out. Everyone cannot take their eyes off it. You instruct everyone to take a pinch. Then slowly all five of you tear it apart like a wishbone. Everyone studies their piece of bread carefully. Wondering how long it will last. Karen is the first to eat hers. She chews each bite a few hundred times before swallowing. Anatoly chews it cautiously, opening his mouth once he finishes each bite. Mariah nibbles on it silently, eyes wide moving from person to person. And Gregor...
Gregor just pops it in his mouth like a cherry. He was gone in an instant. The group thanks you awkwardly. It's not much, but you've run out of options. You wish everyone good night and get ready for bed. You go to bed starting. A5. Good morning. Morning. Let me check if the rain has stopped. It's still flooding. What are we going to do? Humans can live about two to three weeks without food. Water isn't a concern. Rainfall should end in a day or two, right? Actually, precipitation can occur more than 215 days a year here. Well, that sucks. But do you really think it will rain that long? Okay, uh, but, but do you really think it will rain that long? Anatoly. It's been days already. What makes you think it will stop soon? Eck. Relax, everyone. Let's see how long we can ride this out. Fingers crossed it's done by tomorrow. Panic is slowly creeping in. Everyone's looking scared. But you need to survive. Karen and Gregor begin to discuss next options. Do you want to speak with Mariah in the kitchen? Or Anatoly in the living room? Somehow I don't think thinking about everything you've done wrong and how you've doomed everyone is the best choice here. Uh, Anatoly I'm still pissed with because he threw me under the bus. We're going to talk with Maria. Hey. Mariah looks relieved to see you. Hey, that's good. <clears throat> How are you holding up? Mm. Better question, how are you holding up? Not very good. That's very sweet of you to ask. Mariah is looking at you intently. She gets a little closer to you. I noticed you didn't use any meat when cooking. Usually I have to pick it out of the foods the others make. You respected that. Thank you. Mariah is looking at you with admiration. I need to speak with Gregor for a minute, but thanks again. Definitely sure Mariah will remember that. Oh, awesome. You decide to check out the drawer again. Hmm? Where are the others? You ask Potato where the others are. They'll be back. They wanted to explore the labyrinth of tunnels around the cabin. Surely you've seen the mouse holes, right? They connect all over the cabin. Must have been some mouse that created them, or something worse. Anyways. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Things are going to get worse from here on out. You have a feeling Potato is telling the truth. 
realize some drool is leaking out of your mouth. Disgusting. Don't even try to eat. Just get you just get deathly sick if you try. And from the look of you, you need to retain all the water you can. From rationing to cooking, you failed every common sense measure for basic survival this week. You knew something like this would happen, right? Never mind. With floodwaters rising and no food now, I think it'd be a great time to go over the fundamentals of starvation with you. When experiencing starvation, there are four factions, factors that will determine if you live or die. Age, height, weight, and your degree of activity or inactivity. You've been especially lazy, so I think you'll survive a little longer than the others. The Harris-Benedict equation can help you figure out how many calories you need to simply maintain your current weight. The equation produces a number called the Basal Metabolic Rate, or BMR. Stay with me here. BMR equals 655 plus 4.35 times weight in pounds plus 4.7 times height in height and feet. Minus 4.7 age. Got it? For fun, let's try it out on someone here, Mariah. Using Harris Benedict. She looks like she's 120 pounds. About 5 feet 5 inches tall. About 20 years old. Hmm. Crunching the numbers, I think she'd need about 1,388 calories a day. But that's being abnormally stationary. She'd have to lay in bed all day and night, just eating, breathing, and using her brain. Not even very common, not very common when you're starving to death. People tend to get riled up. If she was being very active, let's say, swimming through the floodwaters, we need to multiply, we, we need to multiply, we need to multiply that 1388 calories by 1.9. So now she needs 2683 calories a day. sleep in my seat here. That's quite the difference, especially if you didn't ration the food properly. Which you didn't. I guess that wraps up our first survival lesson. Hopefully we'll never have to speak again. Okay? You shut the drawer, going over the numbers again. I don't think any of us can take this much longer. Gregor's voice starts to crack. I don't want to ask this, but it's time. One of us needs to go outside and search for food. Everyone is silent. I'll go. Mariah. I used to swim all the time near my house. So I probably have the best chance of swimming through the floodwaters. No, wait, what did I? Yeah, okay. Let me go instead. You won't get very far if anything happens to your glasses, Anatoly. You're blind as a mole rat, remember? It's true, but... 
Little guy. Let me go. Gregor, I... Sounds good to me. Karen. His arms are definitely the longest, so he'd probably... I'd uh, be... He'd probably be the best pro... The best at climbing is Jackly Jack thing. What? Probably the best at climbing trees out of all of us. Okay, I... Jeez. I don't know where that came from. No, that wouldn't be right, Gregor. Let me go instead. I get that none of these options are good ones. But we need to find food or help. Gregor grabs a branch from the woodpile. He cuts it into different measurements. Since we can't come to a consensus, let's draw for it. We'll each pick one from my hand. And the shortest will go outside to search for food. You're not worried about drawing. You saw Gregor cut the branch lengths. So you can tell which is the biggest one of the bunch. You pick it. You watch the others intently. Will it be Gregor? Anatoly? Karen? Will it be... Mm, Looks like I got the shortest. Mariah. Mariah. It's okay. I watched Anatoly forage earlier, so I'll know what to look out for. Just swim until you find higher ground and scout the area. Maybe you'll find a fish out there. Everyone looks heartbroken. Anatoly, Gregor, I'll keep us alive. I promise. She promised. Everyone watches as Mariah leaves the cabin. The silence is deafening. Goodbye. The door shuts behind her. You can faintly hear her yell about how cold the water is. And then silence. Mariah has left the cabin. I'm sure we'll see her again. The rest of the group nods. Everyone stays up, waiting and waiting. The sun has completely set. One by one, each person shuffles off to bed. You get ready for bed. Oh, I got an achievement unlock. Dead to me. Now you get ready for bed and easily pass out. You have a strange dream. The two women in front of you could be twins. One of them you recognize, the other is a guest. You would ask the guest to sit where sit on a shovel. Whoops. And then you try... What? Yes, you ask the guest... Okay, you ask the guest to sit on a shovel, and then you try pushing it into the oven. Her legs are so strong you can't get her into the oven. You curse at her repeatedly. Like this, you hiss. You stretch out your legs until your toes are almost sticking in the coals. You feel four hands on your shoulders, and both of them um, push you in. The familiar smell of smoke and burning hair causes you to throw up on the embers. Come on. You can't let it end like this. You rip the metal door off the oven, tearing through the wood logs of the cabin. Screaming, you chase the two through the woods, your burns chill with the wind. The guest looks behind her and her eyes widen when she sees you. She's terrified. Your fury rips trees out by their roots, soil from the ground, rocks from their pits. You've never been this angry in your entire life. Their stamina can't last forever. You're gaining on them. As you trample through a field of wheat, the guest throws a piece of cloth behind her. You catch the glint of it in the sun, golden. As if by magic, the earth splits in front of you, creating a chasm of fire below. 
You fall into the pit, screaming as your eyes begin to bla begin to sizzle from the heat. Hellfire fills your lungs. You're unable to scream anymore. You wake up in a cold sweat. Okay, um, jeez, okay, I am falling asleep in my chair, uh, my body still thinks it's like midnight, and I've gotten very little sleep today. Um, as we are on a new day here, I think I am going to save it here and call it for the night. Um, I was hoping to go longer, but clearly that's not the case. Um, I think that this is going to be quite an interesting game, and uh, we'll continue it next weekend. Uh, but for now, I really need to get some sleep. I am just going to be dead tomorrow if I don't. Um, thank you everyone for turning out. Um, and uh, hopefully I will see you next time. Um, tomorrow we'll be uh, playing Potionomics. Um, and I'll have the schedule up, uh, uh, I'll probably just post it tomorrow. I need to go to bed. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Um, <laughs> tomorrow should hopefully be a longer stream. Um, I should be more used to the change by then, and, uh, then we'll be back up and running. Uh, thank you for coming, and, uh, have a good night.